spoken to say they are too afraid to go out on the streets. Um, they're either hunkered down in, in their buildings or are trying to get into bunkers. We believe there are around 16 bunkers in Aleppo. Um, we hear up to a thousand people can get inside these bunkers. Um, there are big fears about diesel running out as well, vital obviously to try and keep some sort of electric some electricity uh, running in the city. Uh, very little food, um, very little water access, um, and as you say, this um, attack on the White Helmets, this search and rescue group, we spoke to uh, a member of that group, they said that uh, two of their four bases in the city had been destroyed and another one damaged. They said that uh, two ambulances had also uh, been completely destroyed um, and uh, a firefighting, um, firefighting vehicle. So, yeah, t a terrified population in Aleppo this morning. 250,000 people trapped in the east of that city with this, uh, yeah, this shocking news of uh, an imminent offensive. They often put themselves in harm's way. Well, a spokesman for the White Helmets, Abdurrahman al Hassan, told me earlier that the damage caused by these strikes mean that his group will struggle to work. We are sure it's aircraft and it's helicopters and jets, fighting jets, so maybe it's Syrian or Russian. This targeting, it was directly to our power centers, to White Helmet centers in eastern of Aleppo. No warning for civil defense or for civilians. Because also targeting a lot of areas with civilians. Until now, we were able to rescue more than 60 people under rubble, and also with the commentary, more than 30 killed of civilians. Until now, our team's working, and the problem now, we lost a lot of vehicles, and additionally, as you know, it's besieged. We don't have enough fuel, and also the roads now it's cutting because the damage is uh, uh, covered all the roads. In held areas of the city, a week-long ceasefire broke out by the U.S. and Russia ended on Monday, with Moscow holding terrorists and the U.S.-led coalition responsible for breaching the truce. But Washington and its European allies say it's up to Russia to save the peace deal and take extraordinary steps to salvage diplomatic efforts. Death, destruction and despair are the only words that describe the situation in Syria days after the collapse of a Russian-American ceasefire. The truth that started in Aleppo on September the 9th and was to expand across the country lasted only seven days. The violation of the ceasefire triggered a blame game, while Washington accused Russia and Syria for striking an aid convoy in Aleppo. Moscow and Damascus insisted that it was the U.S. that shattered the calm by killing more than 80 Syrian soldiers in Deir al -Zul. The Syrian government on Saturday seized a key area north of Aleppo, tightening its grip on the eastern part of Aleppo that is in the hands of terrorist groups. According to the Syrian military, the airstrikes and shelling of Aleppo will continue for an extended period and will include a ground offensive.